It is. Just want to remind you, I said it in a previous video, I'll say it again. You don't have a lesson, you don't have a test today. You don't have a, you have a quiz today. You don't have a test the next lesson, but the one after that is a test. And any of these review questions, which we would normally do anyway, are very likely, some of them at least, to be on the test. So performance is a function of preparation. Make sure we get these things locked down. Multiple times you have seen these things, and that's a good thing because different kids learn at different paces. Different adults learn at different paces. Your students will learn at different paces. Here we go. Okay, so how many dollars are 195 euros worth? Well, you got 195 euros and it's $1.14 per euro. We know to put this equation in or this um, factor in there because the euros will cancel out and go die die. And that leaves me with $220 and 30 cents. How many euros are $333 with now? Because we're starting with dollars in the numerator, we want to eliminate dollars to be left with euros. We're going to do $333 times 0.88 euros per dollar, canceling out the dollars, and I'm left with 293.04 euros. Okay, percentage problems are something we always need to be aware of and comfortable with. Go ahead. Okay, what's your purchase price? Pre-tax price is 77 bucks. Local sales tax rate is 7%. What's your final cost? Now, there are a few ways to do this. One way is to take 77 and add to it 7% of 77. But it's a little bit easier, I think, to realize that the final cost is the labeled price plus 7% of the labeled price. From a mathematical perspective, we're going to factor out the labeled price. Or you could look at it as it's 100%. Is the labeled price plus seven more percent is 107 percent of multiply the labeled price or you could look at it as a factor the labeled price out so that's 107 percent times 77 dollars and a dollar seven is, uh, pardon me 1.07 is 107 percent listed as a decimal times 77 is 82 dollars and 39 cents one of the big topics that we've hit during this unit is the rule of 72. go ahead So, the rule of 72 says if you take 72 and divide it by the interest rate, you get the number of years you need for the money to double. Or, if you do 72 divided by the number of years, you get the percent you need for it to double. In this case, we're doing 72 divided by 18%. In four years, the money doubles. So, um, we want to get all the way up to um, how much money will she have in 12 years. So... 10,000 the first in four years because it doubles from 5 to 10, then it doubles from 10 to 20, then it doubles from 20 to 40 every four years. So in 12 years, she'll have $40,000. Practice problem. A box-shaped water tank measures 15 feet by 12 feet by 3 feet. Find its volume in cubic yards. Go ahead. Okay, so the tricky part of this is the problem is given to you in feet and it wants the answer in yards. So you have to be very cognizant or aware of that. The volume is 15 feet times 12 feet times three feet, which works out to be 540 cubic feet. But since I'm going from feet to yards, I'm going from smaller to bigger, and that means I'm going to divide. And the factor is three because there's three feet in a yard, but I'm not going to just divide by three. I've got to divide by three for the first feet to yards, another three for the next one, and another three for the last one. Or, as the exponent implies here, cubed, I'm going to do it three times. So, 540 divided by three cubed, which is 27, is 20 cubic yards. Now, another way to look at it would be the 540 is divided by one yard per cubic foot, and that's 20 yards again. Or, because all the feet go die-die, you're only left with yards cubed, okay? The other way to look at it is 12 feet is uh, 
four yards, 15 is five yards, and three feet is one yard. So four times five times one is 20, so that's 20 cubic yards. All right, a little simple interest problem here. Go ahead. Both of them. Okay, so interest is principal times rate times time for simple interest. So in the first problem, it's 2,000 times 5%, 0 0.05 times four years. And when I multiply that out, I come out with $400, okay? Um, it says it pays it off at the end of the third year. We, we mean four years. So if that confused you, I understand that I should have changed that too. But um, what's the total amount she will repay? She's got to repay what she borrowed plus the years. So that's 2,000 plus 400 is 2,400. Next up, number seven, TJ invests 4,000 in a bond yearly rate of 2%. He earns 200 in interest. And this is a good question because it shows you how the formula can be used both ways, kind of like when we did Celsius to Fahrenheit and Fahrenheit to Celsius. So interest is principal times rate times time. Now you're told the interest is 200, and that's equals 4,000 for the principal times the rate of 2%, 0.02 times the time. So 200 is 80T dividing by 80, and I get T is 2.5. So in two and a half years, we'll be there. All right, so that's simple interest. There's also compound interest. Go ahead. Now, before we answer this question, what is the difference between simple interest and compound interest? Okay, compound interest is, the simple interest is just interest on principal. Compound interest is interest on the principal and also interest on the interest. So for this guy to calculate it, we use the um, compound interest formula. We're putting in $50,000 and it's accumulated monthly. So N is equal to 12. That's why that's on the bottom. The interest rate is 0 0.0275. These 12s here will always match because in the formula, they are both Ns. And then five is the number of years. That's what T stands for. So that's 50,000 times. And if you just do this on your calculator, if you type in 1 plus 0 0.0275 divided by 12, this is what you're going to get. 1.00229166667. It actually continues forever with sixes. So I rounded off there. And then 5 times 12 up here in the exponent place is 60. Just punch it into your calculator. It'll tell you $57,361.06. It seems a little low for compound interest, but you're only getting an interest rate of 2.75%. Okay, next up. Savings plan formula. Somewhere on your test, you're going to see this. You're going to see simple interest. You're going to see compound interest. You're going to see savings plan formula. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, use the savings plan formula to find the balance after one year with an APR of 12%. Monthly payments are 325. So I plug in a 325 times. And here's my setup on the top, okay? It's monthly payments, so N is 12. Um, 12 times one in the numerator, because it's one year, 12%.12. So you just plug those numbers into your calculator and you'll come out with 0.1268 over 0 0.01. And that is multiplied then by 325 and it gives you $4,121. I always like to test the reasonability of a number. If you do 325 times 12, um, that's 3,600 and a quarter of 12 is another 300. So that's $3,900. So it seems to me that a total of 4,121, when 3,900 of it is just the principal, yeah, that's a reasonable amount of money to have guessed. If it said 41,000, then I would know I was a little off. Either that or I'd be investing my money in that account. Okay, next. Age 35, you start retire, saving for retirement. If your investment plan pays an APR of 6% and you want to have $1,250,000 when you retire in 30 years, how much should you deposit monthly? Well, this is that same formula, but like we could use the simple interest formula and work it two ways, or Celsius Fahrenheit and work it two ways. We can do the same thing here with a savings plan formula. Go ahead. All right, so 
plugging in the numbers, one point one hundred and twenty five one million two hundred and fifty thousand is equal to the payment times. And these are all the numbers just punched in there. OK, um, when I calculate those numbers punched in there, I get five point oh two two five seven over point zero zero five. Rest of the equation stays the same. And that works out to one point zero zero four. Uh, pardon me, one zero zero four point five two. Dividing both sides by that, and I get the payment has to be $1,244.38 per month. All right, so those are review questions. I really want to call to your attention the idea that if there's any question on this review section that you did not understand, it is highly likely that when you take the test, you will get, you will see a question like that, and then you will likely get it wrong. So if there's something in this review question that you do not understand, I strongly suggest you do either watch the video a couple of times until you do understand it, that you send me an email, explain it to me so I can help you further maybe in the email or schedule some office hours, or that you meet up with someone in the class and talk to them and um, help each other. Like you might not know how to do this one and he might not have, under, or he or she, might not have understood how to do the one, two questions ago and then you do and then you help each other and you learn. All right, on to more review in a minute.